had to buy any Hey, how are you? That's good. How are you? At the big table? Can you complain? Oh, come on, complain. Come on. Who, me? They listen to you? No, I'm good. I'm just trying to get oh. Dean's face. They think I'm going to feed them. They keep looking at me. Yeah, my dogs don't listen to me. Yeah, except yeah. it's food. They're so they looking at me like, come on, the chicken's right over there. Christine and Tom. I'll show you. As far as you know. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Gross, how are you? Now we're waiting for Dean. I'm here. Well, you gotta be seated. <coughs> okay, ready, Wendy? Ready when you are. Okay, we're gonna do this both jointly. I'll call the meeting to order from the city council side. The roll call, please. City Council, we have Mayor Kusumoto. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Murphy. Here. Council Member Churko. Here. Council Member Gross. Here. Council Member Hasselbrink. Here. Traffic Commission, Chair Hill. Here. Vice Chair Pats. Here. Commissioner Cox Hill. Absent. Commissioner Mejia. Here. Commissioner Rodman. Here. Commissioner Singer. Here. And Commissioner West. Here. So, Chair uh, Hill, if I may. Which I'll go ahead and, and uh, introduce the uh, special order of the day, which is the uh, City Council and Traffic Commission workshop. And I think, do we need a report or do we want to just... We can, between Les and I, we'll just give a very brief introduction. This, this item was brought forward at the request of the City Council to have a joint Traffic Commission and City Council meeting to discuss issues in common. And um, I am going to turn over to Les to talk about to drill down a little bit more and get the discussion started. So Les Johnson, Development Services Director. Thank you, Brett. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Council Members, Commission Members. Uh, I know that this has been an item that uh, I believe uh, Council has been asking for for a while to have regular meetings with, uh, with the commissions. And uh, so even though tonight there's really one primary focus, I think this interest here is to be able to have dialogue between the commission and, and uh, city council, and hopefully this will happen maybe on a regular basis going forward. Uh, but tonight specifically, uh, the matter that I believe brought this, uh, this to be agendaized is having to do with the residential parking permit uh, procedures and the review process and what transpired over the last gosh, two years, I believe, uh, back in late uh, 17, uh, the Traffic Commission uh, began a process of uh, sequentially going through each of the five existing uh, residential uh, parking programs that exist in the city. And again, those five are Old Town East, Old Town West, New Dutch, 
Carrier Row and the Greenbrook Woodcrest neighborhoods. Uh, they went through a process of considering those individual uh, programs. Uh, there was notice provided, pub, uh, uh, hearings, and an opportunity for the commission to receive feedback. And there was, as a result of that, back in February, on February 19th, uh, staff provided a report to uh, the council with regards to the recommendations that came forward from uh, from the commission. Uh, as a result of that, uh, there was uh, um, the council essentially went with. Uh, the recommendations of the commission with the exception to uh, the uh, New Dutch neighborhood. They had recommended that that neighborhood program conclude. And uh, as I recall, council had uh, instructed back to the commission for reconsider, to keep the New Dutch neighborhood uh, program existing right now to reconsider possibly expanding uh, that neighborhood as well as the Carrier Road neighborhood boundaries. Uh, both of those boundaries do not include the entire neighborhood itself. It's certain streets within those neighborhoods. And uh, that information was conveyed back to the commission. And then uh, that resulted, I guess, in the need to uh, bring the parties together to talk more about, uh, again, about what uh, has transpired with that. So I'll, I'll conclude with that. Obviously, from a staff standpoint, we're happy to answer any questions you have, but I'll leave it to the council commission at this point. Okay. All right. So um, to the council, any uh, comments, questions that we want to start off with? And then I'll turn it over to Randy, so on our end. And, and Chair Hill, I think it'll probably be more free form, and so maybe we'll do a couple rounds of comments if you don't mind, but um, I know there's a lot of issues probably uh, that you want to bring up on your end in the traffic, so I know because you appeared before the council, uh, some of you, and uh, had asked for this meeting as well. So I'm gonna ask any questions about Sure, well, comment, Mayor? please. Uh, please Mayor Pro just a couple thoughts. First of all, I'd like to thank you guys for what you do. I sat in those chairs years ago. Be careful, you could get stuck in this chair if you know, <laughs> anybody talks to you. So, But uh, you know, it's important work. I know you got overturned on the last one, and it, I think it caused some heartache. But you know, it's, I want to show you how obvious it is that we, we help, haven't always had a good traffic commission here. Because here we are, a little city of 2.2 miles. We've got three, three Cherry Streets. We've got three Reagan Streets. We've got three Pine Streets, and two neighborhoods out of 16 named Dutch. So not too much imagination in the past here. So we're glad you're here and we'll work out whatever we need to here. Thank you. Anybody else? So I want to kind of echo some of those uh, with uh, what Richard said. I was also on the traffic commission. And I know um, you have been given a uh, task to look at the, um, the uh, parking permit process. And I am in favor of this uh, regular review and see if do we still need that, the sunsetting of that. And I know that there was decisions made that may come into question, so I um, want to hear what the you know the feedback is and how we can work better uh, together and make sure that we excuse me we charge you with um, a, a task and serving the, of course the community that we're all interested in and uh, see where we can do better. So with that, Chair Hill, turn it over to you. Well, so first of all, Mayor Pizzolotto. You know, I tend to have a sense of humor. And is this an appropriate place for that, or is this not an appropriate place? It's appropriate. Place? Absolutely appropriate. Life is good. So I want you to know that that's that is what I am. So, okay. So um, it's pretty broad at this moment. So I guess the first thing I would say is that I don't know if anybody that was put off okay. by the concept of being rejected. I think when we propose something, we all understand that we're doing it at your request and at your service, and that you have the right to either agree or not agree with whatever we set forth. And we do so without our personal feelings involved, but based on the information we have again, based on the outreach we make to the community and the support we get from your staff. So. To me, I don't understand why we, why at the city council meeting where this was brought up, why it wasn't just rejected, as opposed to um, um, belittled, right? Publicly demeaned, right? I think those would be the <coughs> fair things that we would say are, are maybe concerns. The actual mechanics of whether you adopt or not what we recommend, that's on you. And I don't think we really understand why you didn't just adopt or reject and move on. Good question. So, um, you want to go around the rest or you want to just uh, seek discussion? Right? 
Okay. Mayor, City Council, and my fellow commissioners. Um, there were se several items that came up that um, we thought needed to be addressed. Uh, first of them is uh, the commission's recommendation to eliminate the new Dutch Haven parking permit program, which uh, Chair Hill mentioned. Uh, the potential for the carrier road permit parking program to include more streets. And quite frankly, we didn't believe that we had the authority to do that. That's something that has to be changed and or approved by the city council. We can only make a recommendation, but uh, we, we can't make those sorts of changes. Uh, the third item is New Dutch Haven and Carrier Row being treated as a whole versus two individual areas. I think that also came up. I watched the uh, online video and that's where I drew uh, the ideas and the comments that I'm making at this time. And the fourth item was where the Marion Street and Greenbrook track <coughs> permit parking program or not. And again, that goes back to what I mentioned a few moments ago, that we don't believe that we have the authority to include or exclude a, an existing item within the parking program. Again, we can only make recommendations, and it's up to the council to either uh, approve disapprove, uh, make a new, um, I forget the name of what it's called, but uh, uh, the way the parking permit program is put into effect uh, is the proclamation, a resolution. You have the ability to make a new resolution to make those kinds of changes. Thank you. So back here to the council, um, looking for comments uh, yeah. and maybe more questions. If the, if, however, we want to proceed. Okay, so okay, so I'll start with that. Um, I, I know the meeting you watched, and those comments came out of my mouth, um, and I know that. And I, I spoke without filter and with a lot of emotion. I had no intention of belittling or demeaning anybody. And if it was taken that way, I apologize. I also watched the meeting, and that's exactly how I would have taken it as well. 
and I never ever want to come across that way. Um, that came out of a weekend of frustration of being hit by a lot of residents who probably didn't participate in the process, but all of a sudden showed up at my front door um, with phone calls and personal visits and everything else. Uh, when I started digging in through it, that is my neighborhood. I live in Carrier Row. I live a street over from Lexington. Um, I remember when the permit program started back in, I think, 2004. Um, it was introduced. Uh, we all got our stickers. We all got our visitor placards, and then it was never enforced. Um, at the time, I didn't understand. I, I, I assumed, bad thing to do, that all of Carrier Row was part of the permit program. So when I dug into it a little bit more and realized that Lexington wasn't part of the permit program or Howard, which is the two most impacted areas on the base level, on the, on the west part of Carrier Row, um, and those are the neighbors that were contacting me about not being able to park in front of their houses on the weekends because they, they've upped the, um, the drill weekends to every other weekend now. So, and a lot of the, the, the base has addressed their parking issue. They have plenty of parking. The reservists choose not to want to get in line on Lexington to get onto the base. It's much easier for them to park on Howard, on Lexington, on some of the other streets. Um, and it impacts weekend parking for neighbors if they want to have parties or birthday parties or however. Um, and then when I saw that New Dutch was going to be excluded and with the construction that's going on across the street and I've been told by a number of people that they are encouraging either employees of the new construction over there for the assisted living uh, facility or visitors for the housing project over there that there is not enough parking so they are encouraging those employees and those visitors to park across the street in our neighborhood and I've gotten emails from people saying please do away with your permit program so we can park there when we go visit our friends and our parents in Cyprus. Um, it, it's a very, that group over there is very vocal. Um, I wouldn't say active, but they're vocal. Um, and uh, my, my comments were pure out of emotion and I apologize, I probably should have done it better. I, I wasn't sure the avenue to communicate the frustration. Um, probably should have contacted Randy. In fact, not probably, I should have contacted Randy and said, hey, here's what's going on. How do you want me to address this at council? Um, how can we bring this to the traffic commission to make a consistent plan of either do the permit program or not do the permit program, but not do one street and not do another street? Because those two neighborhoods are one contiguous neighborhood. There's no border that says, welcome to New Dutch. Um, Howard runs through both neighborhoods, so the first part of Howard, that's Carrier Row, so is that permit and then New Dutch is not? How does it split up? How do we communicate to the people? The people that have lived there for the past 20 years have known about this permit program and all the signs up and it's never been enforced. Uh, the other thing that happened is um, the day after your meeting or two days after your meeting, uh, everybody started getting warning citations on their windshields for all their cars parked on the street. My husband got one. Well, the sticker that we got in 2004 is probably five cars ago. So we didn't have a sticker, and it wasn't a ticket, but it was a warning citation that you had to contact the police department to fix it. So I was concerned that now all these neighbors are getting these warning citations and they have no way of knowing to fix it. They're not aware of the program, and all of a sudden we're starting to enforce a program that hasn't been enforced for 15 years so, th so there was just a lot going on, and like I say, I, I can't apologize enough for how I came off my snarkiness, my unfiltered emotion. It, it shouldn't have been done from the dais. Um, what, I what I would like to do is, you know, we do need to do a better job of being able to have a conduit to be able to communicate between the Traffic Commission and the Council the same way that the Planning Commission communicates with us. Um, one of the things, you know, we're, we're encouraged not to necessarily show up at commission meetings so you guys can do your work. So he, we hear about the decisions after the fact. Uh, with traffic commission, because it's not televised, we don't get to see it. We get to see a condensed version of the minutes a few weeks later. Um, some of the decisions have already been implemented. 
you know, I'd like to recommend that we start recording um, the traffic commissions. I found out today that it's $165 a session to record it. I think that's money well spent. And we are now, as a city, starting to rely more on video minutes than the actual written minutes. And I think traffic is a very hot topic in La Salle, probably more so than planning. And with all the construction going on in our city and around our city, I think that the more transparent that the traffic commission is, the better. Um, people tend to get more upset about traffic than they do about planning. And so I would like to see that. Um, and just open to any kind of suggestions. I know with, with staff, the day after the Planning Commission, they send us a memo about decisions that were made, and we have that the next day. I'd like to recommend to do the same thing with traffic, so we're, we're immediately known of what decisions were made, and if anything's a red flag, then we can bring it up with staff and ask for the logic or the clarification um, and things like that. So just some some baby steps, including a huge behavior modification on my part, and maybe um, less snarkiness and more communication from my part, too. Well, you can be as snarky as you want to me, <laughs> but I prefer you not to do it on the phone. Right, and, and that's where I didn't divide the line. If I, if I may add something, uh, we actually just received brand new information from you tonight. Uh, the fact that you had received this many concerned citizens' calls and information about wanting to park in that area. We had no idea. Uh, had we had that information, perhaps the decision would have been different. And, and that's where I think, and, and that came after the decision. That came after your, your, your meeting. Um, it was, I believe it was communicated to staff, so now how does that get back to the traffic commission? I, I think we just need a better conduit of being able to communicate with each other um, without any Brown Act violations and all the regulations that you have to go through anyway. But there has to be, uh, traffic is such a hot topic in the city, we've got to have a better way of making sure we're all on the same page, making sure that um, any recommendations are, are consistent with kind of the overall master plan of the city. Um, and so we don't come back and say, traffic commission, you, you really missed the boat on that one because that, 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 that looked bad. Oh, Anyway, that's Thank you. I'll go further. Can I make a comment to hmm? The traffic commission, um, they didn't just show up and make a decision of no, we're not going to grant or to this group. They sent out flyers, they sent out um, survey monkeys. Um, they've asked people to reach out to the community. So I would like your recommendations on what you feel we should do to better enhance what we're already doing. Because we felt that we were doing the things that were necessary to outreach to the community. So the community has some responsibility in responding before decisions are made, in my opinion. So I'd like to get your recommendations. So, so, me. so um, thanks, uh, Tony. So, you know, then the... Uh, Nine years I've served, I know that we've had several surveys that were very, very important, and it's really hard to get responses. It just really is. So um, I appreciate all that the commission has done to outreach and, and get those. I know that I'm going to look to uh, Les and even his predecessor. They, they would go out with uh, mailings and door, door hangers and, and everything they can. So it's kind of it's kind of tough to do when people are content with or you know somewhat content with their lives and you know you give them something they're going to be fired up about then they're out there in droves so i, I just you got to do what you're doing and we just kind of trust we have to trust you know your assessment of of the information that you take in and i think um i, I guess unless council has other questions i want to just say you know, I, I will take it uh, as my responsibility for having mod, you know, moderating that meeting up there that I should have controlled it better. And um, I think that, you know, the courage you all had to speak in front of us and, and air the grievance. I think this is a great opportunity, as, as Les said, that, you know, we've, we've asked for these joint meetings. And some of it is, you know, we'd like to have this, but we really should just make it a regular thing. But we're all busy, and it's tough, tough to line up all these schedules. But um, this is, I think, just, a, a, you know, in 
all of the um, difficulty that you all you know have gone through um, I think this is that opportunity to recalibrate to to look forward to how we do things better and how we keep those lines of communication open in in my um, tenure of, of having served uh, two terms and uh, this partial year we've never had a joint uh, meeting between the council and the Commission uh, the traffic Commission we've done it with the Planning Commission I think just maybe twice mm -hmm. and, and so uh, as Les said, this is something we ought to do when we ought to just put on calendar and have that, um, again, that that um, calibration and, and Randy, you know, humor is always appreciated, <laughs> right? Something like this, um, you know, because we're not adversaries. We're not we're not across the table from that. We're, we're actually, you know, you are yeah, at, at serving at our pleasure, but you are our eyes and ears. And we, we need to, you know, when we sit up there, we're getting all kinds of um, um, barbs and you know spears directed at us so sometimes we get a little snarky so um and it was never meant to be against you all right so we're just trying to uh, like, like you're just trying to do the best we can with uh w with our experiences but tony y you just have to kind of keep doing what you're doing and you know make your decisions based on your best assessment as when we ask you that when you want to serve right <coughs> go with unbiased uh, opinion you know look for the best of our community that's all we can ask of you that's all we're trying to do here uh, from the from the dais as well from the elected office I'll open up to my colleagues if I may. You know, I think Randy, you and, and uh, Vice Chair Pats hit the nail on the head. Um, and you don't have the value of an attorney at your meetings where planning and, and the council does. But you're right, you can't just arbitrarily decide you're going to put parking on Marion, permits on Marion, or put permits in other streets. Um, there's a process and you guys have worked that process out and it requires those people to come forward and submit petitions and then it's aired and viewed so you didn't do anything wrong um i think in in my case and and i can pretty much guess but in my case i'm in old town west and i'm in a permit area and i never got a letter a hang tag or anything else because I would have responded to it but I'm on the very south end of it and it really affects only one day which is Sunday now across the street is permit uh, those permits were put into place because of cottonwood cottonwood's gone is it still the same issue in the community and I would have to assume the questionnaires you, you put out got that feedback that said yes let's just leave it alone and we've got new developments going in on the very northern end of Old Town West with the uh, 50 condos and soon the 108 apartments um, the good thing is the, the apartments the stipulations that were put in on that they cannot park on the street and they're not going to get parking permits but there's more parking on site for those uh, apartments than is required and so it shouldn't be an issue with them now it could be with the with the condos um we'll only know that when when they get built and sold and people moved into them but i personally appreciate the work that you guys do and i think your views in terms of of what you could and couldn't do were right on um, i agree with the mayor we tend to get more people that want to come and yak because they're on TV, so maybe you don't want to be on TV. <laughs> uh, and, and Not me. <laughs> well, we can take a vote right now and solve it. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I think you guys are doing a good job. I, I agree, we need to have better lines of communication because I can remember also having served on the Planning Commission. Uh, wondering what the council's thoughts or why they acted the way they did so good dialogue like this is healthy and and appreciated from my perspective and i'm sure really from the rest of them so um you're you're, you're spot on on what you're doing i i just have a couple of quick comments um, one of the things that made this process difficult and i have lived in this city for 25 years is that when we looked at this this item and the responses we got and knowing that it had relatively gone un um, uh, noticed noticed for years right <clears throat> and so that starts to lend to 
an issue because if you know you the responses we got a lot of responses that said well, we'd like signs but we don't want any enforcement you know that you know and so in speaking with with uh less or with the, the police you know what i mean and want them wanting to enforce this item and and if that's the direction we're going to go knowing that there's going to be pushback immediately the second that those warning signs go up there's you can't put a warning that warning signs are going up they just go up and that's you know um there were we went round and round with different ideas of how do we get response and with the limited response we get we absolutely could not ignore them we had to take them at work because that's what we asked for and so uh, we did uh, go quite a bit back and forth. Obviously, we started this process on August the 9th of 2017, and here we are almost two years later. Um, and knowing that the review process that is we're charged with, actually, it's every three years now is what we're supposed to do. So knowing that that's coming again right on the heels of, of what we have been doing now, uh, thinking, okay, well, if we make any small recommendations now we can see what the the impact is and then and then decide you know as we go forward you know with your recommendation of course uh how things go moving forward in the years to come because we during the course of this process we had other people coming forward in the community wanting to initiate new areas as we're going so if you were telling them you need to do the Get your petition, do this, go through the process, and then have that at the ready so that at the conclusion of this we can, you know, balance it out. So um, I, uh, those things made it difficult. Uh, the lack of response, you know, really, um, although we didn't take into consideration everyone, but some of the responses from even a single person were, keep it, oh, keep it, we got, it was unbalanced, and so that was that made it difficult. But I think the fact that it was pretty much gone unenforced for so long, uh, that's probably uh, what made it the hardest, I think, on, on this session. Well, I just wanted to back up um, what, he's, what Commissioner said. Um, I think it was very frustrating to have people in the same questionnaire say, keep it as it is, but we want to change it. Or, you know, I didn't know we had one. And I think the fact that we don't enforce it more, I think that is part of the problem. Because people will say, I lived here 13 years. I didn't know we had a parking permit program. So I think that's part of the program, part of the problem, too. That's more. That's funny. <laughs> the microphone, please, Elliot. I, I think we need to, it's good that we're talking about this now because it's only going to become bigger with the hotel and with the state regulations saying everybody can have a little place in the back backyard mm -hmm. and rent it out or do whatever they want to do with it. So I think every neighborhood is going to be impacted in the next two, three, five, seven, eight years. And uh, we probably should, this is good that we're talking about it now, to get a handle on, on the best practices and to see what other cities are doing in, in this kind of situation. So if I may, <clears throat> um, we, we didn't change the parking in Old Town West because of the new developments. At this point, we didn't think it needed it, but we weren't sure what the impact was gonna look like, and we didn't wanna have to go back and revisit it if we had made a mistake. Um, I think it's really great idea to have us involved, or at least aware of the general plan, and I think that has to be more than just sending us a 200-page document. Um, and as far as the communication, you know, I did reach out when we went into an area where I knew a council member lived and I asked and that was one of the hard things was I asked and I got a response and then at the city council meeting it was 180 degrees different. Um, as far as the base side impact on Carrier Row, not one person said anything about that. We never, the only person we ever heard that from was you. 
and then I don't think most people will decide that Ovation's parking best option is in Carrier Row. I, I think they're going to find a better option across Catella. And then lastly, and I talked about this at our meeting, um, the survey information, the one the sewer district is putting out right now is a waste of money. Mm -hmm. It's a bunch of little small print no one's going to read. And, and in my opinion, who said we have a happy community? We have a happy community. Most of us, leave me alone, I'm good. And that's the way people approach it until we move their cheese. And then they're irate. Yeah. So I think when we communicate or when we ask for input or we provide information, there's a sales technique called hurt and rescue. I think we should say traffic is going to be horrible on La Salle Boulevard in big red letters and then say, want to know more? Find out or something like that. That's the only way you're going to get their attention. As long as our, our goal is to inform them, we're not going to. We have, I, and I know this sounds kind of brutal, but hurt and rescue, I think, is going to be a much more effective means of getting response instead of hurting and rescuing them and then getting it after. Might as well just lead with it. So those are my if, um, You know, Randy, you're right. I'm on the sanitation district, and I've been saying for two years, they're going to dig up our two main streets. It's going to be a mess. Um, you've heard us, and probably 10 other people have heard us. Those surveys, like you said, probably going to go nowhere. This is a, they're actually giving us a chance to determine whether we want to go six hours a day or 24 hours a day. And with that, that project could take three years under certain circumstances if they work nine to three every day. I mean, we could, you know, it's going to be a lifetime job for somebody. And uh, as Tony brought up before, this not getting an answer it's it's not new it's probably the most frustrating thing where we see i remember with the hospital stephen mendoza going through a list of how many meetings he had held for the hospital and there were like 27 community outreach meetings there were eight of these and on, and on the day it came to the council 54 people showed up and stood in line mm -hmm. to speak so it just nobody pays attention to the end you saw it with the bridge over the seal beach bridge across you know seal beach boulevard at that point Nobody knew anything till it happened. And the same thing is going to happen with the sanitation district. The day they start digging in the street, everybody's going to get excited. But up, up until then, you, until it hurts, unfortunately, nobody, nobody's really going to get, get excited enough to do anything about it. They're going to probably say, somebody should do something about that. But it's my, it's my favorite government expression. I don't have a solution, but somebody else should take care of that. But I, you know, I, I agree that going forward, we're going to have to come up with a with a way to reach them. And I don't want to hijack the meeting, but I do want to try to get us back on track. What can we do with the specific set of issues that we have that came out of uh, the council meeting and your response that we can do going forward? to get this to a resolution. That's what I'm hoping to hear. So um, back to the council here. So, Shelly? So, no? I, I'm, I'm, the wheels are turning, and I, I don't know if I have an answer other than the solution just needs to be consistent throughout the neighborhoods. Um, it needs to be communicated. Um, Surveys are, are a great attempt. Um, I know when when I asked staff about the the logic behind um, the the new Dutch decision, and they said that they got 11 responses back, um, <clears throat> and that prompted my snarky. Well, we need to make decisions by common sense and not by lack of survey responses, and that was purely out of emotion because I know that. I got a lot more than 11 responses when it was voted on to discontinue that program. And shame on them for not responding, but reality is there are 177, 187 houses there and they want the program and why they didn't respond, I don't know. Um, like you say, it, it didn't hurt and then all of a sudden it's like, well, wait a minute, now they're going to be parking on our streets. Um, I, I think it's, it's our job to communicate with you 
some of the issues that we see coming down um, construction or developments that are happening and how it's going to impact traffic some of the stuff that that planning sees in their purview that's going to affect traffic and parking and kind of make this seamless you know planning approve this project how's it going to affect traffic traffic now you need to look at this and it's it's not reactive it's more proactive such as planning I mean planning doesn't you know they're they're thinking of things six months a year down the road and i think traffic needs to be that way too and i don't think we've ever given you the tools to be that proactive um you've always been reactive towards a response or or, or something and I, I don't think that's fair for you to be able to operate inside that bubble um Fair enough, and I think where, where my data was coming from was the map of Carrier Row and New Dutch, and it is, it's one continuous neighborhood, even though we have separate names for it. Howard runs, starts at Carrier Row, and it ends at New Dutch at the Navy Golf Course. Um, so if we have a, a permit program in Carrier Row, it ends at Bunker Hill, well, the next street over is Bennington, and now there's not a permit program, well, Bennington is going to suffer the overflow of because now it's free for all as far as parking. Um, same thing with Howard. W one, one house is considered carrier row and the house next door is considered New Dutch. So where does it start and stop? Um, they're not defined separate neighborhoods like the Highlands, that's, that's a neighborhood all by itself and there's definite borders that separate that from any other neighborhood. Um, so then we need that information. We need to know how it impacts how it impacts. So that's all I'm asking right. for. Um, I know this group, you know, they are happy to put forth whatever your request is, but, but give us the guidelines of how right. you, common sense wise, see that happening. That's my Thanks for the input, Tony. So um, I'm going to go back to what I think uh, Randy said earlier. You know that that we should have done is either you know approve or reject, not not uh, um, toss it around like we did during the council meeting. So I have kind of two takeaways here, and I'm going to see make sure that staff agrees. But um, the general plan understanding, um, I think that is not just fair. I think it's necessary. So um, you know we're not here. You're not extensions of us in the sense that. We're, we're pulling on strings and you're the puppet, right? That's not why you're here. You're here to be independent assessments of what we have to deal with as well. And, and at some point, um, we get to be like in the case of a planning commission, we're the appealing body, you know, the body that gets appealed to if there's a decision someone doesn't like, right? So, um, so we have the general plan understanding and then data-driven decisions. I totally agree with you. So what we might think of common sense in our own microcosms, um, if you don't have that data, you can't make the decision. I, I totally get that, but um, you can't get it from us, unfortunately. Only our, our little experiences, but I think I'm looking to staff. So does that make sense, Les, that, um, in, terms of, in terms of what uh, Tony had asked? I mean, I think that's entirely fair, and we have some <coughs> metrics on that. Would you agree? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. It's just it's, it's difficult, as we're talking about, yeah. to get those metrics. Yeah. But um, if I could really quick, Mary, in, in hearing everything, too, in, in my observation of the last few months of, of the dialogue and conversation, you know, one of my thoughts, and I know no decisions are being made today during this meeting, but one of my thoughts is 
maybe it's best for us to keep things status quo right now and, and start enforcing for a bit. Because if anything is going to get people interested and wanting to be a part of this, kind of like to Randy's point a little bit, is maybe we just need to get out there and start enforcing what we already have in place. Give that a few months' time to see what transpires and the public comment from that and then explore possible options and opportunities. But give it a chance for a lot of those, most of our neighborhoods that have not seen the enforcement, have not kind of dust that off, get it up and going again, and then uh, revisit it in a few months. But I think we're going to hear from folks once we start getting out there. And some of that might be positive and some of it may be challenging, but at least we're going to get some feedback and some dialogue with our with our residents. Well, and, and before you enforce, th this program was introduced 15 years ago. Um, before you enforce, you need to roll the program out again. Yeah, we need to educate. Um, this is probably, in my neighborhood, probably 70% of the people that live there weren't there in 2004. Um, we've had a lot of turnover in Carrier Row, especially in a little bit more, probably a little bit less in New Dutch. Um, so if you start enforcing, you're going you're gonna to get an angered reaction. It's like, I didn't even know there's a program. There was a sign there. I mean, no, you don't pay attention to the sign if there hasn't been enforcement for 15 years. So you, you almost, if, if that's the course of doing it, it's almost like introducing it as a brand new program because 15 years, it, it really is. If I, if I may, uh, something that bubbled up within the commission that, uh, and I realize there may be some cost to it, but uh, it became clear to us that perhaps we need to think about different color uh, permits for different areas. Because one of the things that we noticed mm -hmm. is uh, people over by the high school who either have moved out of the area or live in a completely different neighborhood are able to use those parking permits to park in a specific, specific area because they're the same citywide. So we may want to consider something like that. So we've got some ideas that we would like to uh, pass along and share. And I think it would help the program uh, long term. Permits in Greenbrook are green. <laughs> City Manager, you had something? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to mention it. As, and along the lines of what Councilmember Hasselbrink is mentioning and Les mentioned, the part of the education becomes the actual citation process and the warnings. I mean, there's a possibility of doing it like a, a flyer, getting that information out sharing it with the traffic commission and the city council introduce reintroducing it again and then the police department doing warnings first and then citations because captain carr had indicated as the department did start enforcing a particular area we received a lot of compliance in that area and people that were educated just by the either the warnings or the citations themselves so that becomes a part of the education process but getting a flyer out and information first and then probably a warning and then the citations themselves. People do be, come into compliance. And Captain Carr, you talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so shortly after, shortly after the uh, new Dutch Haven Carrier Row was decided upon that we were going to um, <clears throat> keep one part, not another. We had requests that they wanted enforcement or they wanted it to be um, kept, is we decided to go out there and begin issuing the warnings which is all the phone calls you received. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> we did the mailer, we did the request. We tried to educate people about the program. They ignored it, it went in the junk trash, it went unnoticed. Warnings on people's cars gains compliance. This program is set to, to better the lives of, of our community members. So we're not here to punish our community members. If they come to us and say, hey, I didn't know, I've sold a car, forgot about it, even if it was a live citation, we would use common sense and most likely dismiss that citation because it would be something of quality of life standard. This isn't about punishing our, res our residents, it's about making them comply with what they've requested. So those warning citations were there to educate and bring back the program. The direction given to my parking staff was go out there and issue warnings for the next three weeks. Let's see what we get. My records personnel was told, hey, people are gonna come in in large groups wanting more information, wanting to know what to do. Let's get them compliant. After that three week period, let's begin in issuing citations. Now, based on that, people would come in and say, hey, I was unaware, 
didn't have time, work got in the way, whatever, we would take care of it until a period of three months went by. And at that point, I'd have been hard fast to say, it's now time to be enforcing. Carrier Row, even though the name of it butts up against New Dutch Haven, the streets are very minimal. You're talking Saratoga, Green, Langley, and Essex. It doesn't cover all of Carrier Row. It covers certain streets, and that was all based on one business that impacted that area. That business didn't exist for years. Therefore, we didn't get calls for service. Therefore, we didn't go and enforce. New Dutch Haven, no calls for service. The track has not had business in over 15 years the parking impact wasn't there. I have zero calls for service in one year's time. So when you talk about a neighborhood that, that says, hey, we need these parking signs, I have nothing to report on. Old Town West, Old Town East, I have calls. Mm -hmm. We respond to those, our parking guys go out there and do it. We don't go into those neighborhoods because we don't want to punish the residents. So if there's not a problem, if we don't get notified, if we're not hearing of an issue, we're not going to go bother you because it seems like things are moving smooth. That's why there was no enforcement in those areas. So when we were asked, hey, continue this, I went in with a warning program and then I was told to stop. So we're just trying to figure out, and it seems pretty clear now, um, how to educate and then how to get that compliance and get these programs going until it's time to review again. Right. And, I, and I think, and I'll finish real quick, um, the, the biggest offenders, uh, especially for the west side of Carrier Row, is Howard and Lexington, which is not covered by the permit program. So you're not going to get calls because that's not part of a permit. Right. But you have people parking around the corners. You've got people parking and partially parking driveways, not completely blocking. But it, it's, so there, there's nothing to call because there's nothing to enforce. Um, when, when the warnings came out, I was getting questions like, well, how many permits do I get? Do I get any residents or do I get any visitor permits? Well, what if I'm having a party? How can I get one day permits because I'm having a party on Saturday? And those are all questions I couldn't answer. When it was first introduced in 2004, we were told each, each family gets two stickers, assuming there's two cars, and then you get two visitor placards, which I still have. Um, you know, well, what if I have four cars? And a lot of families have four cars. They've got two kids and there's four cars. Can I get more? Well, sure, because this isn't about regulating the residents. It's about, it's about regulating the non-residents. So I think before we start issuing warnings, those questions at least need to be asked and answered. So some people at least know those answers. I didn't know those answers. You know, how, ma how many do you get that type of thing? So um, I, I just want to make sure that we just don't start issuing warnings and not have any answers for some of the details okay so, okay if i may not not to i mean i don't think we need to solve all of everything here so i'm going to ask uh chair hill so does this meet the expectations which you set out when you came before us in terms of the dialogue i know you're not going to have all the answers but i think i think it's a good start do we need to do this again or do you have enough information i think i, I think you gave us the guidance and the guidance is okay. We're doing what we're supposed to do. We need to keep doing what we're doing. And we all understand that the system is imperfect. And yeah. We do the best we can with what we have. And I, think and I think that's how we need to approach what we do. And you need to accept that yeah. that's what we are doing. Yeah. When you talk about things you didn't know, we did. We spent hours, weeks, months, in fact, years discussing those very items. And had you come to us, you could have gotten those answers. Right. But how, so as, a, as council, how do I come to the commission? Do I come through staff? Do I come to the commission? I, that, that, that's what I don't know. Just like I came to you when we started. True. That would be my And then bring it. I don't know what about if you're not my friend, then I guess Right, but, the, but then, so, so I get the information, and then how do I share it without <laughs> a brown act? The idea of the memo after the meeting, I mean, that's, you know, kind of an, a synopsis, a quick, quick view. That way you're aware. Yeah. Especially for items so. such as this one, I think it makes, you know. So, so I think. You know, if I may. So I think, Randy, sort of the conduit, I think, um, again, staff would be uh, providing data and uh, the guidance from the general plan perspective, right? Because that's, you know, we're all doing that from, from maybe where we sit up there. Um, I think the memo, that the summary of the decisions you all made, and then if there is that question, we can go back through staff and get back to the chair, vice chair, and, and ask for a little more uh, additional information. So, um, again, I want to just thank you all. I think this is, uh, this is really good. You know, uh, I didn't know what to expect, but uh, I... 
you know, I, I think this is just that dialogue that you know we're, we're understanding where you're coming from. Um, we're not here to be all control. At least I don't believe we're here to be all controlling. We're here just you know we we charged you to go do a certain portion of what we need to deal with up there, and uh, I just want to thank you all for doing that uh, work. Any other comments from the uh, council over here, Randy? So I have one thing. You know, there's a lot of time and energy and money <coughs> put forth by the commission and by the city council on these programs. And I, from our side anyway, I don't think we were clear on exactly what the goal is. Mm -hmm. And <coughs> once we are clear on that, how we're going to reach that goal, and then a review process to look at some look at the situation so, so, so at a certain period of time to see if we reach that. So, 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 so if I may, just I'll, I'll speak personally, right? As, as just an individual, not not a, a member of the council here, but I think uh, Captain Carr kind of summarized it. If we have a place that's not needing enforcement, I think the one neighborhood where it was the one business on the corner that was impacting the residents, and they were here vocal when I was sitting on the traffic commission. So the sunset part is, if we don't need it, let's get rid of it, yeah. right? I mean, the, the, the streets are public streets. They're owned by everybody. Yeah. Now, there may be that need where we have it. And again, I'm just speaking for me, right? My neighborhood, uh, I'm, we don't need it, I, I don't think. But if there were an impact, I'd be over here asking for it petitioning my neighbors. So I think if you use that as a guidance, if we don't need it, why do we have it? Because we put our, our police in a very difficult position of deciding whether or not to enforce the law. And that is the last that we want to be doing. We want to give them clear direction because it, it comes back on them negatively, no matter what we do. So is it, is it the council and the commission saying to the residents, you need this? Or is it the residents saying upwards, uh, we want this or we want this. It's the residents. Yeah. Who, who, draw, who, who has the big but, but I think I think the thing is, I, I would go back, again, speaking individually, if, if it's not justified as much as any one person may want it, you have to all look at that thing. Is it justified? I think the, the good, uh, let me use the term, Javi, warranted, yeah. <laughs> right? I mean, it, it's got to be, to me, and again, I'm just speaking as an individual. So I hope that helps because I don't think you want us here doing your job. Uh, right. And certainly we don't want to be doing that too. Okay? I mean, that's why you're here. All right. Is there nothing else? We'll call this uh, uh, adjourned to our. No, we, I appreciate that you're here, and uh, let's do this again. <laughs> Next year. <laughs> but seriously, unless, unless we have to do it sooner. Right.